pleased to be here. We're here with Stephanie Buscemi. Stephanie, hello. Nice Hi, to see you. Thank you. Now, Stephanie is the Group Vice President of uh, Business Analytics at, uh, at SAP. And we're also joined by James Fisher. James, Hi. welcome. Uh, James is in the finance area. We're going to talk about EPM today. And uh, as the vice president of that finance, analytics, EPM, uh, SAP had a big announcement today. So uh, welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so for having us. So we heard uh, some real visionary uh, 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 comments this morning in the keynotes, uh, what business is going to look like uh, in the future, five years out, 10 years out, maybe even 30 years out. And uh, an underpinning of that, Stephanie, is going to be analytics, isn't it? And, Absolutely. Uh, now, analytics has been around for a long time. It's nothing really new about analytics, but a lot has changed, right? So can you talk a little bit about, about what has changed in analytics from SAP's perspective? Absolutely. So uh, analytics is a huge focus area of ours. And when we think about it, um, history over time, people have historically thought about analytics either um, from one end or another end. And, and one end is being a basic level reporting. People have said, oh, analytics equals business intelligence or previously called decision support. Um, it's, it's about basic reporting. The other end of the spectrum that hears analytics thinks um, predictive analytics. They take it and think of it more in terms of a uh, statistical modeling um, about algorithms. And so what we're really focused on is recognizing that it's not one or the other, that um, there's a full spectrum of analytics. In fact, we actually would argue that we need to extend the definition of analytics, the most recognizable definitions of analytics out in market. So what we are doing is bringing together the solution assets that we have today as well as building new assets, as well as acquire, aggressively acquiring assets to address the full spectrum of analytics. So recognizing that at a basic level, somebody may need to report, but beyond that, there, there's modeling they need to do for optimization in their business. They need that predictive capability. They need to be able to have solutions that allow them to not only look at a report in a rear view mirror fashion, but actually take that and use it in a prescriptive fashion. So then how do they then take that solution, that information, and have a solution that allows them to build their strategy around that, build a plan around that, and do that dynamically, recognizing that strategy development and execution and planning are dynamic. The moment you think you have a plan, <laughs> it's obsolete. In that in that um, that spectrum that you talked about, you know, starting with the the reporting. I mean that. That was kind of a vision put forth maybe 10 years ago, even pre-9-11, as you recall. And then, and then the whole Sarbanes-Oxley thing and, and, and the like really created a boon for reporting, didn't it, uh, James? And, and so that must have been good for your business. Um, but, but really, when we talk about the predictive analytics, and I want you to talk about EPM 10 and, and what's changed there, we're really going beyond the, f the financial aspects of, of reporting. Is that right? Absolutely. We've seen uh, customers that have built robust performance management frameworks that are focused on finance. That's ultimately where this whole process started, owned by the finance department, doing strategic plans, doing the financial reporting pieces, fueled by regulations like Sarbanes-Oxley, as, as, as you said. But more and more, we're seeing customers come to us, want to have uh, people engaged in a collaborative process, uh, really getting people outside of core finance, but real business users that know what's happening in the business, engaged, uh, really trying to understand what's happening. And getting those people involved, getting them engaged, drives success into those uh, processes. And that's one of the issues we've, we've tried to address with EPM10, really moving performance management much further across the organization. We're kind of using the phrase EPM for the company. So what does that do in terms of, you know, the, the big thing in analytics used to be a single version of the truth, right? I think about... Uh, the stories of, uh, of, of Smith at FedEx talking about why logistics are so poor and everybody has a reason why it's not their fault. And, and he said, we've got to have a single version of the truth. But now, as we enable these business users, uh, are we running the risk of now having multiple versions of the truth again? Uh, and how are we going to reconcile all that? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think the vision is really trying to create multiple versions of the truth. In fact, one of the, the, the whole goals of the broad SAP strategy mm -hmm. around business analytics is to bring everything together in the sense that you can have people looking at common data. But the point is giving them context. It's about enabling the business users to look at that information in the way that's right for them. Uh, we're not just talking about blindly spreading uh, information or publishing reports to, to people no matter what they are. We're about It's about making it specific to their role in the context that they need to make a decision or take an action. Stephanie, you, you, you've used the metaphor in the past of the, uh, the GPS system for business. What, what do you mean by that? 
so I, uh, metaphors work for me. Hopefully they work for, for you. But in terms of GPS, I think about business analytics holistically um, as a GPS system. So you are trying to go somewhere. You're trying to go from point A to point B. And when you go out and look to do that with a map, you, one, get a guided experience through a GPS system. It, it tells you where you are. What does a report do right now? You look to kind of say, where am I at with my sales? Where am, where am I at with my hiring in HR? So the GPS system tells you, you are here now. We do that at the most basic level with BI reporting. But beyond that, the GPS navigates you to wh- you say where you want to go next, and it tells you and helps guide you to get there. It also, my analogy is, incorporates governance, risk, and compliance, which we argue is part of business analytics. Because along the way, what does a GPS system do or any sort of car um, dashboard? It starts to tell you if you're low on gas, or it starts to tell you if there's traffic conditions that are going to slow you down from point A to point B. Those, we translate those into the business as those are just risks that you have and that are indicators of the likelihood of how successful you're going to be on making it to your next destination or whatever your next objective is in your business. So we see the GPS system as a good metaphor for that because same thing, whether it's a pothole in the road or an outage in inventory on a product, you need to know those things. Yeah, so from a customer standpoint, how does the customer, because the GPS metaphor I, I like a lot, which is, so I, I, that resonates with me. Um, from a customer standpoint, though, you've got to set up that sort of view of the world, don't you? And can you talk a little bit about the process that a customer has to go through um, to be able to say, okay, we have this you know, view of, of our world, sure. it's our map, it's customized for us. Um, how, how hard is that? How long does it take? I presume it's a, it's a journey. Uh, talk a little bit about that journey. Sure. And frankly, there isn't uh, one way to go about it. I think it really depends. You're not working with a white piece of paper where an organization um, has come from. But one of the things that we feel like we're uniquely poised to do is because we've spent so much time, particularly SAP, over the last 35 years working with organizations on the transactional systems. So really understanding the core end-to-end processes within an organization. So understanding what are the KPIs of head of, of head of HR versus what are the KPIs of a head of sale and what are the NN processes they go through? That's enabled us to now go back and take analytics and overlay analytics on top of those end-to-end processes. Because the reality is everyone's always thought of analytics as separate from it, but the reality is you're trying to get real-time insights while you're in those process steps. So we've looked and said, okay, what are the, taking that at rich experience on end-to-end processes across organization, map where the analytic insights are typically needed within there, or even allow for you to do ad hoc analysis or, or exploration throughout that, as well as throughout that mapping, what are all the potential risks? What are the controls that you want to put in as an organization as well? So throughout that, again, another example is something like GRC has been courted off to the side. An an audit manager or a risk manager, and most people have wanted to run for the hills when they see that person coming down the hall. The reality is they've been taught that it was a a stick, not a carrot. And the reality is, is GRC is a carrot if you actually embed it and you look at risk analytics and embed it into those end-to-end processes. In business analytics, as you say, embedded yeah. into the system. So Jeff, when I think of EPM and, and, and technologies like EPM, I, I think of the traditional analytics, a lot of financial um, reporting and so forth. So. Talk about what you've done that's different and how you've extended that. Um, I mean, are you including things that, that are more collaborative in nature, more social? Uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, the, really EPM 10 for us has been a journey that we've been on for uh, a number of years. We announced our roadmap in this space in, in 2008. We've delivered a number of releases and we've worked incredibly closely with customers throughout that journey, not just in terms of the design of the applications, but also validating what we've done across the, the release at every step of the way, right the way through to where we are today, which is announcing the release and we're very excited by the, the customer adoption that we're seeing. But really EPM 10 for me is kind of about three buckets. There's an element of unif- unification which is about bringing together the user experience. So if we're building on Stephanie's points around business analytics and putting solutions into the hands of, of, key, uh, of key users, we can't just deliver a performance management suite that's just focused on a specific silo, managing strategy or building a plan or a budget or doing some financial reporting. We need to deliver a common user experience. And I think what that really enables is getting more people involved 
not just increasing the way that you can use an application and making them easier to use, but ultimately increasing user adoption. And by more, involving more people into the, to the suites in this way, we're able to deliver greater value from them. So does that, I infer from that, that things like mobile play in, in a big way, and, and I mean, iPad and app stores, and, and can you talk a little bit about where you guys are with regard to that model? Uh, ab absolutely. I've, I've spoken to a number of people today, and the first thing they've commented on is, well, you're carrying a playbook, and you're carrying a, a BlackBerry, you're carrying an iPhone, and you're carrying an iPad. Um, we've been very uh, clear in our approach to performance management that, you know, we've got some very strong, rich on-premise applications, but we need to extend those out now. Uh, there's no good if you can let someone look at uh, a situation, they can analyze where they are, but if you don't enable them to take action, there's a real issue. So we've announced with EPM10 its availability on a number of, uh, of mobile devices. We've delivered specific point solutions uh, like a strategy management solution for the iPad. Um, but in tomorrow's uh, session, we'll be actually announcing uh, EPM10. Uh, my colleague Brian Cadis will be doing a full end-to-end -end performance management process enabled entirely on a playbook uh, using our new web user experience. So uh, these are all ways in which we're driving into to mobile devices. And it's really a, about allowing people not just to look at an issue, discover an issue, but it's about then giving them the power to take action. And in, in building on what James was saying, we extend it, are extending that across the entire business analytics portfolio area. So we think of business analytics as a system of engagement for everyone across the organization. And he's absolutely right with an EPM 10, but we extend that across all the solutions that we're uh, within there and the way that we're doing that is um, fundamental to why we acquired Sybase because they have the Sybase Unwired platform and it is that platform that says look we'll be device agnostic so we recognize yeah some organizations and uh, B2B will try to standardize around one or two devices but the reality is there's always going to be a pr proliferation I think I heard quoted 160 some odd new devices coming out over the next 24 months uh, and so in looking at that, we've got the device and uh, agnostic platform and we have the ability then to build mobile applications within that integrated with our business analytics solutions and basically take it from the time you're building the app to the time you're provisioning it to the user, the entire life cycle management of that to the security in there to the decommissioning of a, of a user. So I, m I remember last year Platner gave a nice demo, you know, had the, had the mobile demo up on stage. So. So that was sort of last year, I think you laid out the vision, talked about the Sybase acquisition. Um, now, this year, I presume, can I buy this, this stuff today? Absolutely. So um, what you will see right now, for example, is we had the most, within the business analytics offering, we had the 4.0 launch earlier this year in February for business intelligence and information management. And you can now purchase mobile BI. So you have mobile BI, you have it available to you on your handheld device and that you can do a, a license of that so that if somebody wants it it's based by the number of users that you have so per user pardon me fee around that so yes it is available today and then the number of applications that we have that are available mobily that continues to grow so we're leveraging that platform so one there's the leverage factor and the reuse you get of leveraging that mobile platform uh, and two, we are going to continue to extend that across all the solutions within the business analytics family. Talk a little bit about the, the user experience because, I mean, one of the things that a, a BI, traditional BI is criticized uh, uh, about is the complexity, right? I mean, as a, as a business user, you say, all right, just run the report because <laughs> yeah. I can't get near this stuff. Um, how much emphasis, I presume it's a lot, but talk about that a little bit, is from a design standpoint is on the simplicity to enable the, the, the business user to actually interact? I, I think it's twofold, and, and James touched on some of it already, but just building on that is, one, we acquired business objects almost four years ago, and, right. we, and we did through, uh, through buy, through build, and through partner, we've enriched the assets that we have within business analytics. But one of the things we needed to do um, was, was clean up that user experience. And these releases here, 2011 is a very big year for us in terms of user experience. And so to James' point, it's not just to user experience, but it's to user adoption. So if you look at the 4.0 launch and you look at the 10.0 launch here today, um, we've created a, a unified suite so that it, think of it, liken it to Microsoft Office. If you can go in and know how to use 
basic functionality within that, that experience. So look and feel, we've put more modern styling in there. Um, as you traverse, depending what type of need you have as a user, you may have a very simple need around a report or you might want to do deep dive exploration or you may just be a CXO and want some interesting executive dashboards. The the look and feel and the way you interact and use it has com completely be re been revolutionized over this release. It was three years in the making and we used the time well spent. So Is, um, is on demand another aspect of the adoption? I mean, you're getting a lot of a lot of push for that? So it's interesting. Um, I, I think not to, on demand is, is critical. Uh, and I was, what I was going to say was make a comment about a hype cycle and, and that I don't want it to come across in a negative way. We fundamentally believe that we need to optimize for both on demand and on device. We have BI on demand today. Um, we have a couple hundred thousand users there. Um, it continues to grow. It's very use case specific. So we believe that there are certain things in an organization that probably should and will remain on premise. And we're trying to create the flexibility there. So create greater flexibility in how um, companies can purchase and consume as well as deploy. Um, so the answer is we have BI on demand. We continue to grow BI on demand. The nice thing about that is it's not a the um, release cycles around that. I mean, it, it gets updated monthly as opposed to wait till your your next release. It's it's kind of exciting in terms of how quickly we can deliver enhancements to the market around that. But we but to be very clear, you're not going to hear we're becoming an all on demand company, but we're also not just on premise. We're trying to give that flexibility to our customers. On, on premise, on demand, on device is kind of the messaging that yeah, we're absolutely. hearing here yep. at the at the event. So um, makes a lot of sense. I mean, you've got a big base. Um, do you think as we exit this this decade, we'll start to see that portion of the business, the the whole simplicity piece, the end user piece driving this, the the on demand piece? Is that going to be the majority of business, or 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 not necessarily? I mean, can you if you put on your telescope and look out there, do you see like huge demand surging for that, or do you see IT organizations be essentially becoming that service provider-like organization and, and doing their own, let's say, app store is another metaphor. I, I'm not sure I can exactly prescribe how the end state will be, but I do believe the fundamental design principles and the way the way the software needs to be designed and the way people are going to buy is. Centr is, what's central to that is the collaboration aspect mm. and the ability to create better interaction. So, you know, there, everything used to be very sort of purist of we have to wait till we get all the data together and then we have to, you know, let X number of users at a time. And I think that there's just such a pent up demand to create greater collaboration and get the information out to people, almost a, um, a good enough mentality. Um, to, to James' point, to enable them to take action in their business. So I think there's going to be a big push on that. I think it's going to come probably in a lot of different flavors, if I might say. And then over time, we'll, we'll, we'll stabilize and we'll see one, one area become dominant. I think that the main point that, that I'm seeing in a lot of the conversations with customers and the work we're doing is that, you know, we and, and the market as a whole needs to understand how business users, people that are working with information, that are taking decisions, they need to understand how their roles are evolving, how those are changing. As long as we stay in, in tune with that, then really whatever that outcome is in 10 years, we can let that evolve and we'll be there just as we are today with the developing suite we have that can respond to those changes. It's an interesting shift, Stephanie, too, that you, you and James are talking about because, I mean, James, in your traditional business, it's, you know, the, as I was saying, the one version of the truth. Um, you've got to have very precise metrics, um, a lot of financial and quantitative information, but, I mean, I'm sure you guys have followed the Hadoop movement. It's like the wild, wild west of open source and there's just data everywhere. People are making and drawing inferences and, and, and as Stephanie, as you said, good enough is really what people are looking for and they're actually beginning to monetize good enough in a big way. Do you see that whole um, open source movement that, that what I'm calling the Wild West as sort of a, a near term or mid term opportunity for you guys or is it just too crazy right now? Um, I wouldn't call it a near-term opportunity for us. I mean, I don't think um, midterm. I don't think anything's out of the question mm -hmm. there. I think 
uh, you know, SACP has made significant investment in the area of SME and other areas, but when I look at our current install base of customers, uh, large portion, uh, large enterprise organizations, and the way they're looking to go about solving the problems, um, that probably, we're not seeing that that's, that that's the biggest pull from them at this point. So we we tend to prioritize around the needs of the market and the needs of the customer. I think it has a role, it has a place. If you watch, um, I think it'll be use case specific. So we're talking to Stephanie Buscemi and James Fisher about uh, SAP's analytics thrust. A uh, big transformation actually in SAP. We're, we're seeing a drive towards simplicity, um, uh, 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 enabling end users and business users, and, and we've been talking about mo mobility. Stephanie and James, thanks very much for coming inside the Cube. We appreciate you uh, sharing your knowledge and uh, the specifics about H H uh, SAP's vision, and uh, good luck at the rest of the event. Good seeing you guys. Thank, Thank you.